And we're back. Hi. To talk about the movie Lurid, starring Lucille Ball. Mm -hmm. So, Lucille Ball is actually one of my favorites. I really loved her in this movie. Mm -hmm. She was, you know, I really loved that she wasn't over the top in this. Yeah. She, you know, people see her as this very over the top female comedic actress yeah. all the time. I loved that she actually had more reservation about her mm -hmm. in this, but I still loved that she had her wit about her and that she wasn't just like this, save me. Yeah. No, this is a, it's a film noir, which I only stumbled on, I want to say last year, Lucy at the time saw herself as a dramatic actress. She wasn't going for being a comedian, she was going for being the ingenue. Yeah. And Lurid absolutely would have been in that vein of movies where she was like, you know, wearing the gowns and. Well, I thought be... she was gorgeous. Yeah, like absolutely. Like in that, like, and the thing is too is that she, like, I thought it was a fresh of breath of air seeing her in this movie mm -hmm. because of the fact that you know not only is she set in London. You know, and she has that very, you know, American-esque of, like, yeah, I know I'm an American. I know I'm surrounded by, you know, these beautiful British accents. But, you know, I'm not going to sit here and be swayed by, you know, a pompous ass. <laughs> yeah. I thought the cat got your tongue, sweetie. Come along, let's warm up. Lucy? John who? Where's he from? Here. Who's paying for the stamps? I'd like to know. Me or your mighty friend? Yeah, shut up. Where'd you meet him? Like, I'm not going to be swayed by, you know... Fancy meals, fancy dances, or anything like that, you know, uh -huh. be who you are, show me who you are. And that's how she played, you know, with the male, like, love interest. And that's uh -huh. how I loved her. But the spin about this movie is the fact that she's, like, very on guard <laughs> throughout the whole entire movie. Thank you. You're alone, aren't you? I'd like to be. But she's still very interested in the male love interest too. And the movie, the movie is set in London, and it's there's murder uh, murders of uh, that the police are trying to solve and they can't figure it out. And Lucy can kind of lure out the murderer, so the police use her basically almost as like an undercover mm -hmm. uh, agent, and uh, and. The suspicion falls on the man who Lucy has fallen in love with. Yeah. And it is a very, very typical standard film noir movie. It's yeah. it's not a bad movie. It's just not a great movie. Her, oh, no. Her it's... performance is the best thing. Yeah. yeah, no. It's definitely not like... I wouldn't give it five stars. Mm. I wouldn't give the movie five stars. I'd give her performance five stars. Yes. Um. But the movie itself, I'd probably give it, like, three and a half. Yeah. Um, because I feel like it's very cliche. It is. And I feel like it... <sighs> so, obviously, I feel like they did a very good job of leading up to who the murderer actually is. Because you don't really suspect it yeah. at first. But then, as they're leading up to it... I feel like they did a very sloppy job at the end. Uh -huh. Because I feel like it just kind of gave it away. Well, like, they, they didn't give any suspense to it at all. They point to the love interest so hard that you know it can't possibly be him. Yeah. Because um, there the wouldn't be a mystery then. It, you can't have a mystery movie where who's the killer... And then just point to this one guy. He's the only one. He's the only suspect. He's the only one that could possibly be. Right. And then you don't. Then you don't suspect him anymore. Right. And you know the other thing too that really drives me nuts is that they had a very, like, so I don't remember his name and forgive me, but they had a very well known like horror, like, um. Boris Karloff. Thank you. Uh huh. Um, Your Excellency. I have never seen you looking so well. Would you be good enough to observe the delicacy of this line? Turn, my dear. Turn. Um, like, after Boris Karloff in there. Yeah. 
playing a very good role, like being like very dramatic and everything. And you think that maybe it might be him, but then it's like that's all you see of him in that little yeah. He's there just so that you can go, oh, it's him, and then he disappears. From yeah, him. and it's like, you could have used him more. Mm-hmm. You could have used him more. You just use him. <laughs> and then you, you directly just go, <laughs> Yeah. love interest. Yep. That's what makes it so hard to call it a great movie, <laughs> because it's not. I think the thing that stood out to me more than anything else was the almost like father daughter relationship that forms between Lucy and the chief of police uh, I, or lead detective uh, who's who's putting her in danger to help him solve the case. Well, I think the thing too that drove me nuts about that is that how they how they first got into this predicament is that she comes into you know the precinct and. He asks her to shut her eyes and asks her a bunch of questions about what she sees, what whatever, right? Yeah. And she lists it all off perfectly, right? Mm-hmm. And he's just like, yep, we're going to use you. <laughs> and it's like... It's not a great setup. <laughs> like... You've got all yep, the makings of yep, a great detective. Yep, he has red hair. Uh-huh. <sighs> like... Are you kidding me? It's just... Mm -hmm. I could literally... No. No. No! Not a great setup, but the relationship as it develops, I enjoyed where he feels protective of her, but he's still putting her in danger. Well, it's like, fly, baby bird, fly! Mm. Yeah. Well, and and he's stupid, too! (laughs) He's stupid. <laughs> he is stupid. He is like he has like <laughs> okay, so obviously, you know, the killer is giving like flat out evidence, right? Yeah. Sending like colorful words, whatever, right? Uh. And then when <laughs> it's at the scene where she's wearing her dress and it looks like stars, and they're just both looking at the dress and they're like uh-huh. <laughs> it's like okay there is more than one person that lives in this house uh-huh. there is more than one person who has access to the lovers you know yeah. office uh-huh. and you're just gonna point at the lover like like I said in a mystery like this you can you can make us kind of look sideways at the the actual killer but you're supposed to also lead us away from him so when they point so hard at him i'm just like it ain't him i don't know who it is yet but it ain't him yeah no like and the other thing too that makes me so frustrated is that how they made the lover mad at her Mm -hmm. because it was like okay if if tucker got mad at me for being undercover. I get that, but I feel like he would understand Uh at some point in time, like, hey, this is what happened, but at the same time, we still fall in love. Yeah. You know, why don't we try to catch this person together? He wouldn't just be like, (laughs) side railing. I feel like it was too fucking hard (laughs) of how much he was denying her. Uh Uh-huh. And, and and really, the fact that he was a suspect at all, when he was acting suspicious as fuck, and he's like, well, how dare you? You should have known me. And they hadn't really even known each other that long. It right. was like, you know, you're supposed, to ju- you're supposed to know who I am. It's like, why? I've known you like three days, and you're acting like you're probably the serial killer. So Right, well... The- thing too that drives me nuts is that so like in one of the very first scenes is that so when he is supposed to be like interviewing girls or whatever he's in his office and his uh secretary or his best friend uh julian uh 
has a newspaper and is talking about the killers, right? Uh -huh. He's disinterested in the kills, right? Here, a victim of poet killer. What a horrible mess. You read this? <laughs> You're too sentimental. The eight little darlings probably ran off with professional charmers who promised them the riches of the Orient. You don't understand women, old boy. Yeah. And so he's not even interested in the kills or anything like that, right? And so as an audience member, that's like the first inkling for me to just kind of be like either A, he's either a really good like murderer or B, uh -huh. he's not the killer. Yeah. And so it's something where it's just, it's kind of like if someone were to pin something on me, I would try to derive the attention away from me. And so for him to sit there and try to like not take the blame, I get it. But at the same time, he has no interest in the kills at all. Mm -hmm. Like absolutely none at all. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah, I can see where he's possibly the murderer, but then it's too... Too obvious. Too obvious. Too circumstantial. Yeah. So there's no way he can be it.